In this video, I'm going to explore what makes the best binoculars for bug out bags, why you need a pair, and why indeed they should be different to the main pair of binoculars that you leave back home, at your base, or indeed keep within your main survival bag. And we're going to start right now. Hello and welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. My name is Jason. I trust that this video finds you all safe and well. Due to the current global crisis in regards to the COVID-19 virus, I've had a lot of people come to me asking and inquiring about what the best binoculars they should be using in different types of survival situations. So in response to this, I've created a mini series on the BBR website, the link to which I'll put down below and somewhere up above there. Um, it, just going over the different types of binoculars that are best um, for use um, at your base, within your main survival bag. And like today, um, I thought I would take a mini uh, sub-niche of this and discuss about what would be the best binoculars to keep in your um, emergency bug out bag. So what exactly is a bug out bag? Well, the term is derived from army slang and to bug out means to move away, retreat or flee from your current position very quickly. Thus, a bug out bag is a type of survival bag that should be completely pre-packed and 100% ready for you to simply grab in a hurry when you need to flee, evacuate, or indeed bug out. Usually coming in the form of a backpack or sometimes a duffel bag, a bug out bag needs to be easy to carry and portable. But at the same time, the advice from the military and experienced preppers is that it should contain all the kit that you need to survive and stay safe for between two and four days. Whilst there will be a fair amount of overlap, and indeed your bug out bag should contain many of the same types of items as that found in your long term survival bag, and indeed probably at your base, there will be some important differences. This is mainly due to the fact that a bug out bag is essentially designed for rapid evacuation purposes and not for long term survival. The most important point to stress is that a bug out bag needs to be 100% ready to go at, with you at any single time, day or night. There is no point in having a half prepared bag that you have to spend vital moments filling it up with everything that you may need by emptying out other bags or rummaging through your stores. Not only does this waste time, but in a panic or stressful situation, the chances that you will forget something that may be vitally important a little later on will be very high. The whole purpose is that when you need to leave somewhere immediately, you don't have to think as you can be sure that your bug out bag will have everything you need to survive for a few days in just one bag. Different types of food, water containers, protective clothing, different types of weapons to temporary shelters. There are some excellent resources on the web written by experienced survival and prepper experts that go through the most important items that you need to keep in your bug out bag. And as I'm not an expert in these, this area, I won't go through them here, but I have added links um, in my survival series on the BBR website to the best ones that I have found. However, what I have also found is that almost without fail, all of them agree that you need a pair of binoculars in your bag, and here is why. In an evacuation, binoculars enable you to scout ahead from a safe distance for people, dangerous situations or ambushes, they allow you to scan potential routes or possible camping spots without having to actually go there. This can save you time and energy. A pair of binoculars allows you to monitor your surroundings for danger or indeed opportunities. And this can be very important if you're camped or hunkered down for the night. They also allow you to gather information on people, game animals and even supplies in your area. So whilst most good survival and prepper websites agree that you should keep a pair of binoculars in your bug out bag, most do not go into detail as to which pair of binoculars. And those that do, um, I find that they are not experts in this field and thus the advice they give is often misleading or so in some way unsatisfactory. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at it from my perspective as someone who knows at least a little bit about optics and binoculars and discuss the, what type of binocular you should be getting. And then finally, I will recommend to you a few pairs that I have fully tested and reviewed and which I feel would be ideal. As your bug out bag is primarily designed to be as portable and easy to carry as possible, yet also needs to contain a fairly large amount of equipment, food and gear, it goes without saying that everything within it should be as small and as lightweight as possible. 
So even though there is no doubt that a full size pair of binoculars will have a superior optical performance and a better capability in low light, in this particular situation I feel the most important characteristic should be its portability and thus I would suggest either a full compact or if you have the space, personally I would try and get a smaller mid size binocular because it will have the advantage in that it will extend the usefulness of the binocular into lower light conditions. Thus I would be looking at binoculars with objective lenses of between 26 and 34 millimeters. In terms of the magnification, I would suggest the ideal power to be either 8 or 10 times. Some may be tempted to go higher, but as we are already using relatively small objective lenses, it is vitally important to maintain a reasonable size of exapupil, as this will ensure that you have at least a reasonable good quality low light performance. Think of it this way, in a survival situation there is little point in carrying about a very high powered binocular that only works well in ideal light situations. If you are unsure what I mean when I refer to the exapupil or indeed any other technical term, please be sure to check out the link somewhere down below or up there above um, that will take you through to the full description on the BBR website. Or if you prefer, just ask your question down below in the comments and I will get back to you. In terms of the price, I feel it is really important to spend enough to ensure that the binocular that you do get is of a good quality and will last and most importantly incorporate reasonably good quality glass and coatings to deliver a good enough performance. But as always, my general advice is always only to spend as much as you can afford to easily replace. It is also well worth keeping in mind that the binoculars that you do get should permanently live in your bug out bag and should never really ever be used until the day comes and hopefully it never will when the S hits the fan and you actually need to evacuate in a rush. Now spending any sort of money on a pair of binoculars that you will hopefully never use may seem totally crazy, but by doing this you will ensure that the binocular and indeed all the other gear that you have bought will still be there when needed and not accidentally left back at base or at home because you forgot to return it after using them for birding on the back porch during good times a few months ago. So because of this, I personally would not be spending too much money on my bug out bag binoculars. Save that for your main pair and rather focus on getting something like a really good entry to mid range instrument that offers good value for money. Ok so now that we've sort of established what type of binocular and sort of how much money we should be spending on them, I'm next going to go through some recommendations based on binoculars that I've fully tested and reviewed. To begin with, I wanted to bring these Vortex Vanquish binoculars to your attention. Costing less than $100 or £100, these compact binoculars come with either an 8x or a 10x magnification and 26mm objective lenses. This combination, as well as the use of a fully multi coated optical system and good quality poro prisms, meant that they deliver a quality of view which I believe is far better than what I would expect to find at this price level. Indeed, it was so good that they went on to win the award for the best low cost binocular of 2020 on BBR. Fully water and fog proof, which is not something that you always find at this price range. Uh, these Vortex binoculars are extremely lightweight and reasonably small for a compact binocular. So it's for these and a whole host of other reasons why I would recommend them as being a good low cost option for your bug out bag. For way more information as well as comparisons between these and other similar binoculars, be sure to check out my full review on the BBR website, link down in the description below. Whilst the use of poroprisms is certainly one of the major contributing factors to just how Vortex optics have managed to produce such a relatively good performance from a relatively low costing instrument like this. The downside is the fact that the shape of the poro prism is not quite as compact as that of a roof prism binocular and its straight through design. So whilst you have to spend a little bit more money to get the same level of optical performance, the advantage that a roof prism compact has, and especially a roof prism compact like the Steiner Blue Horizons that feature a double hinge design, is that they fold up into a really small shape that is far more compact than the, an equivalent uh, poroprism binocular. So for example these both have the same size 26mm objective lenses, yet as you can see the Steiner folds up into a much smaller shape and therefore is much easier to put and, and store away in your bug out bag. One of the highest scoring compacts that I've ever tested, these Steiner Blue Horizon 10x26 binoculars were a deserved winner of the award for the best compact binoculars of 2020. Fully multi-coated, the optics on these binoculars are able to adapt to changes in sunlight. 
Working on the same principle as some sunglasses, they contain photosensitive glass that is designed to control the amount of light that gets transmitted through the binocular depending on the light conditions. The result is that you get less glare and in a very bright light, the image is less washed out than you would normally get and thus looks more vibrant. For more details on this, the advantages as well as the disadvantages, be sure to check out the link in the description down below that will take you through to the full review that also contains links on where to buy them to get the best deal. As I knew I was going on safari early on in the year, I made certain to test and review as many mid-sized binoculars as I could. And whilst there were many contenders, this pick of the bunch for me most certainly was these Hawk Frontier EDX 8x32 binoculars. And so whilst they might not be quite as compact as a full compact like these Steiners, the advantage is that the slightly larger objective lenses are able to capture and let in more light. And thus, for the same magnification, you get a much larger exit pupil. And therefore, not only do you get a better optical performance, but the performance is far better in low light situations. Achieving a truly outstanding total BBR score of 85%, they managed to score an almost perfect 9 out of 10 for image quality, optical stats and optical components, and an 8 out of 10 for everything else. Highlights include a magnesium chassis that is both robust and lightweight, excellent quality fully multi-coated optical system with ED glass elements in the lenses, that not only produces a bright, superior quality image, but also a really wide field of view. This makes it easier for you to find and follow fast moving objects like wildlife. If you take into account the very high level of components and the resulting performance, then their current retail price makes them incredibly good value for money, especially for everyday use. But for an instrument that you're hopefully never going to use, these may just be a little bit too pricey for some. However, I've decided to include them for those who have a larger budget and want a higher end binocular for their bug out bag. If you're looking for a less expensive binocular for your bug out bag than these excellent Hawk Frontier EDXs, then I have a number of recommendations for you. This includes these Carson RD 8x34s, as well as the Bressa Persh and the Opticron Savannah uh, mid-size binoculars. Full details to which and where to buy them can be found as usual down in the link in the description below. So there you have it. I do hope that this video has been of both use and of interest to you. If you did like it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if possible, please do remember to subscribe. In the future, I do plan to bring out more videos uh, based on the survival series. And then obviously once the COVID virus um, hopefully disappears and we can all return to more pleasanter topics. Also, if you have any questions or um, any comments, um, oh, I always appreciate them and you're free to just um, pop them down below and I will get back to you. So thank you very much for watching and until I see you again next time, cheers for now and stay safe.